Diksha, are we almost done doing these episodes? Nope. Oh my god, how many episodes are there? Just nine. Okay, so this is the last one. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. guys welcome back to the channel my name is Yona I'm a third year pediatric medical student at CSPM and talking about CSPM on today's episode we are actually talking about CSPM in this incredible series of exploring all nine pediatric medical schools again I want to give a shout out to all the other eight students who participated in this amazing series of bringing you the best information out there regarding their schools and I hope hopefully it has helped you during your application process thus far but in today's episode we're gonna be talking about CSPM this is our last episode and I'm really excited that this is actually coming to a close and there's gonna be a wide range of episodes out there for each podiatry school and maybe one day we'll make a 10th th one because there will be a school opening up soon in Texas. I can't wait to actually do this episode. I'm not actually gonna be doing it because I think it would be best if Diksha did it because she is better than me. True. In every single, you see that? She's right behind the camera already saying it, guys. I don't wanna keep going on and on and on about this, but as you guys already know, this series is dedicated to you to you prospective students watching this video, learning about each podiatry school. Without further ado, I am happy to present my partner in crime, Diksha. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Diksha from the DPM Journey, and you already know I'm a third year podiatric medical student at CSPM, and obviously I was the one chosen to do this interview because I know the school better. What's the area like? Things to do, eat, safety, weather? Well, first of all, we live near San Francisco. That's my favorite part because there's so much to do, so much to eat all the time. And I think you all probably know this already, but in case you're not well acquainted with what SF is like, really there are always hiking spots. There are always wonderful food spots to eat and cafes. And also if you ever are interested in going out to dance or just meeting up with friends or family at a restaurant or a pub or a bar <laughs> or anything like that. There are a bunch of those in SF. Oakland actually has a bunch of that as well. And we are located in Oakland, so it's great in that aspect. And also, if you sometimes miss the undergrad life, then you can go to Berkeley and again, lots of affordable food in Berkeley, a lot more affordable than SF. I feel like there are just always things to do event-wise in Berkeley as well, in Oakland, of course. Safety-wise, Oakland is pretty safe. However, there are times when it's not. And by that, I just mean you have to be safe. You just have to be safe about it. Uh, we had a friend who would have his, his earphones or something and he'd be walking around in broad daylight in a gas station. It shouldn't be that bad, you would think, but you just have to be aware of your surroundings and sometimes it works some situations where he found himself in where he didn't want to be. But other than that, if you just live in a safe location, you're just careful about where you are frequenting and you make sure you're with friends, you should be fine. I even lived alone in Oakland my first year. I just made sure I had a garage for my car and I had people around me and neighbors that I knew. As Yona may have said in other videos, we live in an island nearby. So you could just talk to us if you ever consider um, attending school at CSPM because there's also that. Weather, we have great weather pretty much in the 70s, 80s during the summertime. And then even in the fall, it's very tolerable. Same with the springtime, especially if you're from the East Coast and you're coming to the West Coast, you, you'll find this weather pretty pleasant. It's not going to be as cold as you may like it. It's not gonna be frigid, but Okay, what the living situation is like. It is it is expensive, I won't pretend. It, it can start to get pretty expensive, and especially when you want to be in a safer location. But if you live with more people, you can always curb the costs in that way. When I was living alone, I didn't get as much bang for buck. When I started living with my classmates, it made it a lot better. You can live pretty close, wouldn't recommend it. I was about 10 minutes away. It wasn't a bad drive. So, and you could get safety and a lot of grocery stores are around us. There's lots of food places, even from the campus. CSPM, you could just walk down and there is this 
incredible Asian grocery store for anything that you want to get. And we also have other grocery stores around nearby. I think we have Sprouts nearby. I loved Sprouts my first year because it was easy. If I didn't feel like I had time to go back home and get my car and go shopping, I could just walk on by. It's really close. Go to Sprouts, get my shopping done. For class sizes and what classes did we take our first year? Uh, and do we have a specific semester system? For us, our class sizes range from around 45 to 50. So it's a very small class size. You tend to get to know your classmates pretty early on. Classes that, I, that we take our first year, okay, fall semester, we have human anatomy, biochemistry, histology, physiology, lower extremity anatomy, evidence-based medicine. Evidence-based medicine is where we just learn a little bit about research and how to, uh, it might have changed a little bit recently, but it's mostly about research and how to present your research properly because that's really important when you're trying to become a physician. And then spring semester, we take genetics, human anatomy, again, the second semester for human anatomy, second semester for biochemistry, physiology, lower extremity anatomy. Well, we specifically start our rotations a little after our spring semester. So clinical skills rotation, we did have something like that where we learned a little bit about the being in clinic and the instruments and what is expected of us as beginning medical students, pretty much. And then we also took clinical medicine and biomechanics. Biomechanics is basically what we like to call the physics of the feet, but if you are applying to podiatric medical school already, you probably already knew that. Do you have research opportunities at your school and does your school have a research lab? A huge reason why some of us chose the school is because we have the Mark Lab. The Mark Lab is the Motion Analysis Research Center, so you could virtually do anything that you want that's really especially related to biomechanics at this lab. We have two wonderful wonderful individuals who work at this center who can help you out with any project ideas that you have, which is a little harder, or what people normally do is work under them for any other projects that they may already have ongoing that students from the past have created or professors already have. So do you have clubs at your school? Most of our clubs at our school, you can choose from any of the clubs that our school has because we also are with nurses, we're with uh, OT students, we're with PT students, with PA students. So we have all sorts of healthcare professionals that are learning at our school as well. So you could potentially join any of those clubs. For our program specifically, for the Podiatric Medical School program, we do have clubs. A lot of clubs are related, especially to podiatry. And we meet about once or twice a semester for each of those clubs. Some of them are the Journal Club, the Podo Pediatrics Club, Forensic Podiatry, the Podiatry Medical Mission Association, the Podiatric Residency Preparation Club, Podiatric Education Society, Student National Podiatric Medical Association, American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons, American Society of Podiatric Surgeons, and it goes on and on. <laughs> we, we have anything that you could possibly imagine me a sports medicine practice management wound care association we have plenty and if there's something that you're looking for that you saw in a, another podiatric medical school you can always start it and speak to the higher-ups about that do you have a gym and a cafeteria located on campus yes another another of our favorites we hold it very close to our heart and right now it's been tough because of covid we can't be there at the moment but our gym basically gets everything done all of the basics Okay, we have weightlifting that we could do. We have free lit, uh, what is it, free weights. Um, we have treadmills, anything that you'd like, honestly, we have that. And then do we have a cafeteria? Yes. So we have a hospital located right next to our campus. And I honestly consider it on campus. And we just go over there. And if you were interviewing in person, for example, you would, you would go with Dr. Tran. I'm sure if you've applied, you know who Dr. Tran is. He's incredible. But we go with him and we just eat lunch with upperclassmen when we're interviewing. But also, in general, when it's lunchtime for us or we want to grab a snack or anything, we go to the cafeteria at the hospital. It's very nice. Um, I'm personally a vegan and I still find a bunch of food. They have food catered to anyone. Okay, are there any academic support services for students? 
Yes, we have a wonderful program for that as well. Whenever we're struggling with anything that we need help with, first of all, of course, we, we have a tutoring system and any of us can also apply to be tutors, which is pretty great. But in order to do that, you need to have one of the professors vouching for you your first year, if you're trying to tutor for as a first um, for your first year courses. Oh, and then if that, if you notice that, okay, that maybe it's not the academic part that's really affecting you. Maybe it's, maybe it's something that the tutors can't help with, but you need some learning strategy help. You could work with our learning therapist is what I call her. I'm not sure if that's her official, official name, but she's very helpful also. She'll go through how to truly tackle problems and questions when you're taking a multiple choice exam, which is often what we are taking in medical school. And then are there any counseling services for students for mental health? Yes, we have 10 sessions that we can have with a mental health specialist and you could do that virtually or you could do it over the phone. Really, they're just very flexible people. So we have that. And if that doesn't, their timing doesn't work with you, then you can talk to them and work out a schedule to um, connect with another, I think it's under Sutter Health, another program that's connected with their school that could still help us. Most favorite part about your school, we have lots of supportive professors. When I don't understand something in a class, I can always reach out and I get an email back from them pretty quickly. And so I'm really happy about that. That's probably my favorite part, as well as research opportunity and the fact that when, I'm in, when I was in anatomy lab, I was able to keep it to just four students working on a cadaver. That was important to me because I'm someone who needs to learn and hands-on, and I got a lot of that experience and exposure. One of my most, most favorite parts about our school is that we start clinical rotations earlier on, which means we start early um, our second year. With that, we get all of our exposure. Like I said, I'm a hands-on kind of person. So getting that exposure early on, asking the kind of questions that I wouldn't be able to have answered or even think of questioning in classes was really helpful because now as a third year medical student, I'm able to, yes, I'm still learning a lot, but I'm able to use that foundation that I have for my second year and apply. Does the school have a special group to help spouses or family members for acclimating to medical school? They do, and what I mean by that is Samuel Merritt University as a whole has that option for families and spouses and whatnot. And so you could always have those kind of sessions and reach out to the school for any of that. And also they do during orientation, you have the choice to be able to meet other families and that can also help as well. Does your school offer scholarships? So our school offers scholarships and now they have a new program that they began where even during school, you can apply to a bunch of these scholarships and guaranteed there will be at least one that you are eligible for. As far as scholarships for when you first begin for your tuition, we also have that offered, but you would have to, we always suggest for students to apply early on so that you have the chance, you have a higher chance of being able to be eligible for these scholarships and of course they're merit-based. So try to do your best. Do you need a car? Is there public transportation? We know people who were able to handle not having a car because they maybe came from out of state. So that is possible, but you would have to have pretty much someone by your side who can take you to, I don't know, to a restaurant or <laughs> take you for shopping or something because unless you live right next to a grocery store or right next to everything, that would be a little difficult. But otherwise, you can get by. There are plenty of people who do that. So some people bike to campus um, from the BART. So we have people who come from Sacramento, the Sacramento area. So they'll BART over and then they'll have a bike on hand. So then they'll take their bike and bike to campus from the BART station. That's a possibility. We had a friend who, uh, who would come on a skateboard to campus and he would get by that way. So there's, there are plenty of ways to do that in the beginning, but when it comes to rotations, that's when it gets a little tough, but again, people still do it because we do have a, a lot of options for public transportation. You just have to plan properly and plan ahead. 
as to where you want to live to make that possible. Are there any jobs that students can take on as first year students in the school, such as peer tutors and note takers? So yes, as I had mentioned before, both of those are actually a possibility. If for note taking, we have that as an option if a student really needs it in a classroom setting. Otherwise, tutors, they're constantly necessary. So if you perform well or you've proven to a professor that you can um, achieve a B or an A in a, in a class, preferably an A, I'm sure, then they will consider you as a tutor um, or consider you as someone who could do well as a tutor and you can apply for that. So that's an option. And also another option that I really enjoy, I was tutoring for a little bit, but it didn't make me as happy as when I would teach students to dance or just have little dance workout sessions. It's not that I was teaching them to dance. And that's what you could also do with your time. Or if there's some something else that you feel like is you're an expert at, then be willing to, you, you could, you could share that and you could be compensated for it because you're helping other students out in the process. How often are certain facilities open for students, like the labs, the gym? For one, I know for sure that the library is open, right now at least, at the moment. It's open 7.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. and not on Saturdays or Sundays. But when we had school, when we used to be able to actually attend school in person, it was also open on Saturdays and Sundays. So the gym was usually open to until 10 p.m., 11 p.m. around that time. It's, it's open long enough for you to get what you want out of it because the building itself anyways closes down at a certain time. Then does your school have any special ties with residency programs? We don't have specific ties with residency programs, but we definitely rotate through those programs such as St. Mary's, which is one of the residency programs. So you do have exposure to residents and the staff and the doctors, attendings at these areas, and you can learn under them, and that'll definitely help for your future. Add any other information that you think can help. Our school is pretty supportive in that we make sure that after courses, you they, they welcome you to please give feedback, and they definitely take that feedback into consideration and I really appreciate that I can reach out to professors and talk about anything that I want. For example, when Yona and I and other, uh, other fellow students had some ideas for research, we were able to speak to professors and they went out of their way to help us and they continue to, um, even though it's really hard for them to find time and we appreciate that immensely and that's something you would get out of our school. And so it's, it's a pretty, pretty excellent place if you want to have a balance in your life and you want to have the support that you need and if you want to start clinical rotations early and be able to hopefully perform uh, in externships because of that and show off all your skills <laughs> that you learned early on and if that's important to you then this is a school for you anyways thanks for listening and enjoying and tuning in to this entire series if you haven't watched the rest of the videos definitely check them out and you might enjoy something about a school that you didn't know before. So we'll see you in the next video. Take care.